wait, wait, wait a minute. What are you saying? You have no body. And something just clicked to me and says, what do you mean you have no body? The body of Christ was sacrificed for you. So you have a body. I said, God, be the good. And then he just started to feed me that part. And on tonight, my topic for you, and I think this is the longest topic I ever had, is that God is able. Because I, I, the souls are just coming to me, and I just started thinking that God is able to do just what he said he would do. And that song just came resonating with me. So it started the first part of my topic, that God is able. Then the second song that came to me said, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ. So the second part is God is able, therefore I am standing on his promises. Then, you know, I started thinking, the song came, I won't turn back, I can't go back. Because I don't want to go back to where you brought me from. So the second part, he brought me out of my mess. Don't turn back. And, you know, my mess is my mess. Your mess is your mess. So it might not be the same thing. So we have to kind of self-reflect. I'm talking about, I'm glad he brought me out of my mess. So you could say he brought me out of your mess. And as I was just thinking, I was like, God, how dare I say I have no body? Mm. How dare I say I have no body? He gave his body for me. So unworthy. He was crucified for me. So unworthy. And the Bible says that without shedding of blood, there's no remission. He showed that he was able when he took on the fall of man and went here and there healing and delivering the people of God and raising the dead. So I know that he's able because if he did it for them, he could do it for me. So the first one said, God, I know you're able. You're able to do this. If you did it for them, you're able to do it for me. I said, okay, the first part, I got that. He's able. He's able. He, he's done it before. What more can he do? And then I say, you know what? I can stand on his promises. Because he's not a God that he should lie. Whatever he says will come to pass. Hmm. Is it up, it's up to us to obey his word and trust in him, even when it seems impossible. And I just said, the story of the children of Israel just came back to me. And it said, don't be like the children of Israel. When the children of Israel was wandering in the wilderness, and they sent the 12 spies out to Canaan, in Numbers 13, Verse 26 and 33. And let's go with this as we read. Because I want to read, you know, I, 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 I know I'm a person, right? I said, I'm just this type. And when I'm getting the word fed to me, I don't claim to be a Bible scholar. I don't claim to know from Genesis to Revelations. I stay in my lane. So sometimes when you're preaching the word of God, you have to, you know, as a teacher, as my profession, there's something called differentiation. So in the classroom, we have to differentiate for each student that's in the class. So if I'm teaching one student that's so brilliant, that's above the grade level, I have to be able to reach that student. And then the student that's below grade level, I have to be able to reach that student. So sometimes if I'm getting the word preached to me, and they come with a story. I'm like, man, I never, I, 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 I heard it, but I don't need the full detail of it. And if they're not really like giving me some details, I, I'm in the Bible in the middle of the message. I'm telling you the truth. I'm in the Bible because I said I need to know this thing because in order for me to follow you, I got to know what you're talking about. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of it because I we, we gonna be here all night if I go through the whole. You know, it was in the 
somewhere. And you say, you know what, you go and look. See how crowded it is in there. Is it worth for me to go? Because if, if, if the post office is too crowded, I'm not going to bother, especially during the corona. If it's too crowded, go and look. If it's too crowded, I'll come back and look. Right? In our terms. So they sent these 12 spies to King. And they went to see what will be. Even though God already promised them that this is your promised land. It's going to be filled with milk and honey. Who's there? Don't, look, don't worry about who's there. Don't fear who's there. They might look big, but don't worry because I'm your God. I'm bigger than anybody else. So let's go to the word because it is written. And we're in Numbers 13, verse 26 to 33. And they went and came to Moses. This is after they went, they went, and they come back to report to Moses to see, you know, where they looked. I'm going to tell you, Moses and Aaron, what we saw. Even though God already promised them. Just remember, God already promised them. He told them what was going to happen. And then when it came to Moses and then to Aaron, it's all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where thou sentest us, and surely it goeth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So, just as God said, so it was. But here comes the doubt. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The seas are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Malachites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well above to overcome it. So Caleb was like, you know, yes, these different people are saying, oh, this, this, this person was there in the walls and this. But Caleb was like, God promised us. I'm standing on his promises. Let's go on. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. Stronger than we. Our God is stronger than anything. So we don't have to worry about them stronger than we, because we got somebody pushing us behind us. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eat up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come to the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. So even though God promised it them, he go to doubt. Twelve went. Ten came back and said, mm -mm, we, can't, we can't do it. Ten out of the twelve. And the two, Joshua and Caleb, was all the ones saying, let's go. God, God promised us. Why are you doubting him? Let's stand on his promises. They were doubtful that they would be able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. But I know I serve a God that is mighty. I know I serve a God that is great. I know I serve a God that is powerful. So I'm standing on his promises. Now, the children of Israel had a promise, but God has a promise for you. Are you standing on your promise that God has for you? Are you standing on your promise? Or are you looking for a way to escape, to say, they're stronger than me. Are you standing on your promises? Are you standing firm in that whatever you want, whatever your heart desires, if it's in the will of God, he will make it possible for you. And as I look, I said, God, all the way back in Genesis, you made that covenant with Abraham about this. And they still doubt you? And then I came to my mind and said, Lord, you've been telling us, just serve me and I will bless you. Just serve me and I will bless you. And I, you know, I always got to relate to myself. And I just think about 
church, it just said, give your life to God. Just give your life to God. Just give your life to God. You know you go to church and hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, tomorrow. Give your life to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow. So we always say tomorrow. But tomorrow is not promised to us. And just like the children of Israel was already told of their promises, you have been told of your promises. So tonight I'm wholeheartedly telling you to stand firmly on your promises. But you might be asking, how could I stand on God's promises? In order for us to stand on God's promises, we have to truly trust Him. Because the Bible states in Psalms 84, 11, and 12, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld, withheld from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusted in thee. If we trust in him, we're blessed. In Proverbs 3 and 5 states, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Now the 10 out of 12 spies were not trusting in God. They were leaning onto their own understanding. Because they're seeing these giants, and we're, we're small. We can't, we can't fight these giants. We, we can't overcome them. We can't do it because they're forgetting the God that they serve. They're forgetting the God that took them out of slavery. They're forgetting the God that promised them the land. I don't want to forget my promises. Because he promised me that if I serve him, mm, there is a reward in heaven. And I'm looking forward to that reward. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to stand on my promises. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to stand on my promises. How do you stand on your promises? Trust him. Mm. That's it. Just trust him at his word. When it seems like it's not, you're not going to make it. Stand firm. You know, this week I was looking on social media and I saw this video of this soldier. And the soldier, you know, she was walking and she had a full gear on, the backpack, the gun. And they were saying this soldier walked 12 miles in under three hours with the full gear on. And she was at the end of the walk. And she's walking, she's walking, and she's falling down. And then she would fall down, and she like struggles, she would get back up. And everybody's on the side, like, here, yeah, get back up, get back up. She'd get back up. And her legs are just like trembling. She's walking, and she'd fall again. And she'll just get back up and keep going. And then she will keep going, and then she'll fall again. And I'm looking at this video, and she fell like at least three times. But what I took away from that is that every time she fell, she got back up. One time she used a gun to help her get back up. And then I was looking at that and I was like, that is how we should be when we come to the Lord. We need to be, as it states, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians, now, I'm, the Egyptians, yes, the Bible said the Egyptians, but I want you to put yourself in a, whatever your Egyptian is. So we don't have no Egyptians coming after us, right? Whatever your Egyptian is that's coming after you, put it in that place. So I'm going to read it again. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today for the, put it in for yourself, whom he has seen today, he shall see them no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. Because the song says, hold your peace, and let the Lord fight your battle. Because victory, victory shall be mine. Mm. Do you have a battle that you are fighting on your own? Sometimes we have some struggles, and we're thinking, I can handle it. I, I, this is, I, this is. I could do this. I just, I just need more time. I could, I could, and it's like breaking you down. But we have to understand that you don't have to fight those battles by yourself. You've been struggling, falling on the floor, weeping at night. But I'm here to tell you that you have a savior that's able to fight the battle, and he will come out victorious every time. The Bible states in Psalms 35 that weeping endure for night. But joy! <laughs> My neighbors don't come upstairs and say what's going on. What do you do? Hallelujah. Ooh. Weeping may endure for 
night. But joy comes in the morning. So if you are in your mess, hallelujah, he can bring you out. Your mess is not my mess. My mess is not your mess. Whatever it may be, he's able to bring you out. You just have to stand on your promises, hallelujah, and trust and believe. The eyes of stays in Luke 18 and 22. And he said the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Just take a minute with that word. Take a minute with that. It said the things which are impossible with men. Like if I ask my friend to, do you think you could help me pick this up? No, man, that's too heavy. That's impossible for me to do. That's it. What am I asking you for? I got a God that thinks that are impossible. It's possible for him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We serve a God that makes impossible possible. Mm -hmm. He makes the unreachable reachable. Yes. He is that good. He is that great. He is that powerful. He is that mighty. He is the king of kings. He is the laws of laws. He is the everlasting father. He is my all in all. Glory be to God. So grateful for that wonderful father. So grateful for that wonderful father. Now after we look over all that he has done, how can we turn back? Because we went through, God is able. Yes, he is. I'm going to stand on his promises because I know that he's able. And then he took me out of my mess. But it comes sometimes that we get so comfortable. We get so complacent that yes, he saved me. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I got the quickness for everything. The pastor said, glory to God. I'm shouting every Sabbath. But then you're not in church every day of the week. You're not getting preached to every day of the week. So you have to have it indwelling in you. And even then, sometimes you hit that point that you, you, you keep going, you're like, I'm safe. Oh, yes, I read the Bible today. Uh, I prayed today. Oh, this morning, I'm kind of late. I'm kind of late. I gotta go. I gotta go. I didn't have time to do prayer. I'm just going to thank you, Lord. I'm out the door. Next day come, like that, you didn't get the Lord out, you out the door. Next time, you just out the door. And then it just becomes a habit. And then before you know it, you're like, wait a minute. What's going on? The urgency to learn of him is not there no more. The urgency to hear his word is not there no more. Your station that went from the gospel station to something else. Constantly, you're like, am I turning away from God? After he done proved that he's able? After he showed me how to trust him and stand on his promises? So after he took me out of my mess? I turned on him? I turned my back on all that he has done for me? It happens, church. It ain't just a new believer. It ain't the believer that's in the middle. You know, we all have different stages. It ain't the believer that's been in it for 30, 50 years. It's everybody. It can happen to everybody. But you have to recognize when it happens. Now, just as God brought the children of Israel out. And he gave them the promises. And they doubted him. Now they're starting to say, listen, this is not, this is not what I thought it was going to be. You know, what's going on? This is not what I thought it was going to be. They turned their back on him. Could you imagine you took somebody out of slavery? They were enslaved. You freed them, and they had the nerve to say, let's go back into slavery. Let's go to the word of God. Exodus 40, 
14. You're going to read from 1 to 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before, you know what that word is, between Middog and the sea over against Bazabon. Excuse me. See, the devil tried to take that word from me. But he fed me. So I'm going to get it back. They wanted to go back to the mess that God delivered them from. God has made us free, but we want to go back to the bondage of sin. They said that, let's go back to Egypt because it's not working out for us. They said, let's get a captain and bring it back. God gave you a leader in Moses and Aaron. But yet still, you want to make somebody else and go back into the slavery. Let's not go back to bondage of sin. He sacrificed his own son for us, but we want to go back under the law. We're addicts of sin. That's what it is. We're addicts of sin. If you're an addict, you, you can't control what it is. I was watching this documentary of this Britain um, documentary guy, and he was talking about, I forgot what the drug was called, and I think ice. And he was talking about how rampant it was in Britain. And how, you know, the people that were addicted to it, he said it did not discriminate. The poor, the rich, the layman that's just working at nine to five, and the business tycoon, it did not discriminate. They all were addicted to this drug. They just one after one hit, they were hooked. And that's what it is with sin. Once you get into it and you don't know that you have a God that was sacrificed his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you are not really looking into yourself, you can become addicted to sin. He said, what's she talking about, addicted to sin? You stay in your mess. You come to church every week, the word is being preached to you, and you leave and not the same where you came in. Mm. Glory be to God. You in there, you jumping up and down, you praising God, you shouting more than everybody else. But all of this was a good old dance. You lost a couple of pounds, worked off some calories. That's all it was. But you wasn't really giving God the glory. Because you have to have a relationship with him. You have to know this man that you're serving. You have to know the sacrifice that he has done for us. You have to know all that he has done to take you out of your mess. That you don't turn your back on him. Glory be to God. I pray that the Lord keep me on the straight and narrow path. Because I don't want to go back to where he brought me from. Because when I look around and see you, what the Lord has done for me, be to God, glory be to God. When I look around, I don't know about you, but those that, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about, I'm sorry visitors that don't know me, but when I preach, I preach to myself too, because I am a soul too. Thank you, our minister, I was preaching, teach that good lesson. I am a soul. And my soul belongs to God. And when I preach, I'm not just preaching to you. I got to preach to me. Because all we I don't want to be up here preaching the word. And I get lost. So I. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. 
peace of God. I want to be saved. I want to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to be like a ten foolish virgins. I want to have my light. I want to have all of my lamp ready to be my bridegroom. The Lord have mercy. I want those doors to be shut on me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So I don't want to turn back on him. Because I know he's able. So I'm going to stand on his promises. Because he told me out of my mess. Because he told me out of my mess. Because he told me out of my mess. Because he told me out of my stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he done took me out of my 
my mess. And I'm so grateful to him for that. The Bible also states in Luke 9 and 62, and Jesus said unto him, no man have put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. I don't know about you, but I want to be fit for the kingdom. I don't want the Lord to say depart from me. I want to say well done, good and faithful servant. I want my work to not be in vain. After we have proven that he's able, we need to stand on his promises when he takes us out of our mess, our bondage, our addiction, whatever it may be. Ask him to create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Ghost spirit from me. And every time I read that scripture, something else, and I was just like, oh my gosh. He was like, don't take your Holy Ghost. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. I don't know about anybody else, but I always say, when the Lord touches me and I'm in the spirit, it's the best feeling in the world. I always say, I feel that I can move mountains. I feel that whatever the issue is, whatever problems I may have, it's nothing. I tell you, that's the best feeling in the world. If you ain't got it, you better ask him for it. If you ain't got it, you better seek for it. Because until you feel the Holy Ghost, until you feel his spirit is dwelling in you, you don't know what, you don't know what feeling good feels like. You don't know what feeling good feels like. I know some people, you know, okay, I'm just going to give you a disclaimer. I am a member of the pastor, um, Apostle Michael J. Evans Senior. So, you know, some people say sex is the best feeling in the world. That ain't got nothing. That can't even come close to the Holy Ghost. That don't even come close to the Holy Ghost. I'm just talking to the married folks, y'all. Not single people, just married folks. Having the Holy Ghost is the best feeling in the world. Because to me, it's, I'm connected with God on a different level. You can talk to him in your prayers, as we learned in our Bible study, Wednesday night, 645. And you can have that conversation with him. But it's different when you are in well, when he, he takes over the movement of your body, when you are praising him so much that your physical body is so tired, but you can't stop because you want to give him all the glory that you have. When you know that your feet hurt in your shoes, you just kick them off because I just can't stop giving him God praise. I can't stop thanking him for all his blessings that he's bestowed upon me. I can't stop giving him the glory. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I tell you, I was in this office. And I was like, Lord, I was having a whole service before the service. Because the Lord was just feeding me. And I was like, Lord, give me some more of that body. Give me some more of that body. Give me some more of that body that I thought I didn't have. Give me some more of that body. And I'm looking at the time. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what time is it? I'm like, God, he's still feeding me. He's still feeding me. And I was like, I need to get ready. Well, he's still feeding me. He's still feeding me. And I'm like, how many pages is this? I'm like, he's still feeding me. And I'm like, Lord, I asked you to feed me. So what am I complaining about? I asked you to speak through me and not of myself. So what are you, what are you complaining about? I'm like, I said, look at you acting like the people, the children of Israel, complaining and murmuring. The same thing you talk about, look at you. And I had to test, I said, to get myself together. And I said, Lord, I thank you. Glory be to God, I thank you. Because I thought I only had an intro and a conclusion. But you give me all this body. You give me all this body. And I thank you for it. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. But don't worry, I'll be finished soon. <laughs> I'll be finished soon. If he allows me to. If he allows me to. Because I'm not forcing you to stay here. You want that good 
they came from. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Because if we sin willfully by continuously going back to our mess, there will be no sacrifice of sin. Like you sacrificed us already. Next come judgment. He sacrificed us already. He died on that cross that we should have now grace and mercy. We're no longer under the law. We have grace and mercy. Aren't you grateful for that? How can we turn our back on that? How can we turn our back on that? Glory be to God. And in my conclusion, I know y'all was waiting for that. Y'all was waiting for it. Y'all was waiting for it. Hallelujah. In my conclusion, just remember, um, I am a member of Apostle Michael J. Evans, senior. So I, I don't know. This is my conclusion. But if the God that I serve wants me to have two or three, I don't know. I was, I'm just disclaimer. I am a member of Apostle Michael J. Evans, senior. Church, Faith Hope Church of Living God, 193 Putnam Avenue. As soon as the corner is over, we'll be back. You are welcome to come. Praise God. Mm -hmm. All right. Luke 24, verse 46 and 47. And said unto them, Thus it is written, Behold Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So I'm just doing what thus saith the Lord. I'm just trying to preach the gospel the best I know how. The best that he gave me the ability to do so. Because it says it's for remission of sins should be preached in his name. Not my name. I'm nobody. But in his name. Let's go to Acts 2, 37, 38. Now when they heard this, mm -hmm. now I preach the gospel mm. of repentance and remission of sin. Now he's giving you instructions. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the possible, Men and brethren, what shall we do? I told you it was going to be a cliffhanger. Right? So sometimes preachers preach this long message. You slept through half of it. You know, you had a little nod. Sometimes in my world, I got to hit some people. Like, you know, you know who you are. Then they try to act like I was sleeping too. And I was like, no, I was just resting my eyes. But sometimes you hear these messages and at the end, you got to question yourself after you said all that. After the preacher done preached and sweat out their shirt and all this energy has drained from their body, what shall we do? Because I know when I preach, that's why I, I made sure I said, you know, I'm going to have to stand up tonight. Because the last time I tried to sit down, that didn't work out well. And I wasn't preaching that. So I said, I'm just going to stand up because I need a little more room. Because I might be in my house, but I am the temple right here. So in my mind, I'm at 193 Putin Avenue preaching the word of God. And you have to say, what shall we do? You done heard this word. I done sweated. You see, I done sweated. My curls probably all gone. What shall we do with this word? What was she talking about? How can I apply it to me? Because, you know, if, if I go through and I said, he took you out your mess, your mess was alcohol. You're going to say, I don't drink. That's not my mess. That's not for me. If I said, your mess was adultery, mm, I'm faithful. I'm not a matter. What was she talking about? That's not for me. And if I said, your mess was drugs. Oh, I ain't never touched that in my life. She's not talking to me. That's not for me. That word's not for me. 
So I didn't get specific. I just said your mess and my mess. Whatever it is that is your mess, it don't matter what it is. Because you know what? Sin is sin. There's no big sin. There's no little sin. It's just sin. So whatever is your mess, you take that for yourself. Because I'm taking it for myself. And I'm reflecting like, God took me out of my mess. He took me out of my mess, so I'm not going to turn my back on him. And what shall I do with this word? I'm going to let it resonate. And I'm going to reflect on my life and say, do I really believe that God is able? Am I really standing firm on his promises? Because it said, if, I, if you just trust me, I will bless you. And you're wondering, blessings is going over there. Blessings is going over there. And you're wondering, where's my blessing? Where's my blessing? This person over here is getting blessed with this. This person over there is getting blessed with this. Where's my blessing? And he said, all you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is trust him. And you know, the Bible studies, listen, I'm enjoying those Bible studies on Wednesday night. Praise God for those teachers. I've been enjoying those Bible studies because that resonated with me. And I said, you, you, we were just talking about prophets and prophecy. And I'm like, some people are waiting for the prophet to come tell them, you're going to get a blessing. Some people waiting for that prophet to come tell them. They say, oh, get a, get a blessing, go get a blessing, go get a blessing. But he already told you all you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is trust him. All you have to do is trust him. Now, I don't want, I don't want nobody, you know, I'm not talking about prophets. I'm not, I'm not a prophetess. I'm not a prophet. I'm just saying what that's saying to God. But I'm just saying he already told you. He already gave you his promises. All you have to do is stand on him. All you got to do is stand on the promises of God. All you got to do is believe that God is able. And I'm believing on tonight. I'm believing on tonight that God is able to do all things. That he's a God of impossibilities. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of wonders. So whatever it may be, just believe in God. Stand on his promises. Be grateful that he took you out of your mess. And don't turn back on him. Don't turn back on him. You know, I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful. I thought I was going to make it through that time, but I'm so grateful to God. Because sometimes you think about what he has brought you through. I, I have to believe that I have my days of weeping. I have my days of weeping. But I'm in my joy of tonight. I'm in my joy season. My weeping season is over. My weeping season is over. Hallelujah. And I'm in my joy season. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God of how he allowed me to go through some suffering. But I came out victorious. Sometimes when you're in that suffering period, you're questioning God. And you say, God, why? Why am I going through this? Why is this new? Why is this dealing with me? Why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? But when you come out of it and you look over your life, and you said, truthfully, I can say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Because you proved to me that you're able. You proved to me that I'm stronger than I thought I was. You proved to me that if I just trust you, you will bless me. Not in my time, but what you said is time. And that's what we have to learn, that it's not in our time. Mm-mm-mm. It's not in our time, but it's in God's time. When God says it, then it is the time. I'm so grateful. You know, I always have to say how grateful I am 
Because I was in church all my life. But until that wonderful man of God, mm -mm -mm, that wonderful man of God was able to sit on the, that wonderful man of God that God used so gratefully. And I'm so grateful for that he preached the word of God, that it pricked my heart. That even though I've been hearing this all the time, I finally decided to give my life to God. That God used that, that servant in the one of our apostle, our late apostle Rufus Sinclair Woods. That God used him to preach the word to me. He was preaching to everybody else in church, but it felt like it was just for me. Because the way he preached, you felt like, you know, you know, you ever see the movie and they're like, everybody just, the background goes away. And it's just the one person. That's how it felt because that word was piercing my heart. And I just pray that the words that I'm saying tonight pierce somebody's heart. That you take that step. And you decide that I'm going to make a change. And if you're wavering, Stand on his promises. Stand firm on his promises. And know that he is God. And know that he is able. And if you feel like, you know, it's not where I used to be. It's not where I want to be. He's still able. Because he has given us grace and mercy. He has provided us grace and mercy. And all you have to do is make up your mind. So I'm going to give my all to him. I'm going to trust him. And he will bless you. I'm going to prove him. And come out victorious. Because I know. That crazy lady said. That he's a God of the impossible. He makes it possible, possible. So in your mind, you're thinking, I can't get this job because it's COVID-19 time. Everybody else is getting laid off. And I'm trying to change career or I'm trying to get this new job. But if it's for you and if it's in God's will, he's able. And if you're saying, I want it, take this business venture, but I'm scared because times are different and you know, the economy is not the same. If it's for you, he's able. And if you say, I wanna step out of faith, but I'm just not sure what to do. Keep asking, what shall we do? Keep asking yourself, what shall I do? And just remember that I said, trust him. Just trust him that he's able. That it may seem hard. It may seem difficult. But just trust him on tonight. And know that he's able. And trust that he has promises for you. That you should be just serve him. There's a reward at the end. I pray that whatever I have said tonight was a blessing on your heart. I pray that God continually bless you. I pray that he continually show you the miracles that he's capable of. And he continues to show you that he is able so that you're able to stand on his promises. Because there's a song that says, he lifted me up from the miry clay. He planted my feet on a rock to stay. And that's the reason why I sing and I shout. My Jesus came down, down, down. And he lifted me up, up, up. You pray my strength to the Lord. Because my aim and my desire is to live for him. My aim and my desire is to make it in. And if I go away, I'm asking you to bring me back into the fold. Because I want to make it in. I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want him to say that 
that you have run the race. You have fought the good fight. Glory be to God. You pray my strength and Lord. In Jesus' name.